In this video, I'm going to talk about mass spectrometry and the physics behind mass spectrometry. So before knowing it, let's in a simplistic manner learn what is mass spectrometry. So mass spec is nothing very serious. Mass spec is just like a weighing machine. In our normal weighing machine, we can weigh uh, substance in milligram range but in mass spec machine we can weigh even molecules so if we have a very unknown molecule a uh, mysterious molecule we can first start looking at it by measuring its molecular weight in that respect mass spec is very important machine for us so what information mass spec can give us mass spec can give us the molecular weight of the compound and it can also give this is the first second uh, it can give the molecular formula it can give us the formula uh, it can also give us some structural information it can give us some structural info then it can give us a uh, information about isotopes then it can give us sometimes it can give us protein sequence but that's a special case protein sequence so let's see how this mass spec works so here we have a mass spec machine and in this mass spec machine here is the sample insertion port sample insertion system so from here sample is inserted after the sample is inserted the sample would go in this path and here is a huge magnet beneath this box and under this magnetic field the sample will would take a curved path and this radius of the curved path would be detected by a detector and ultimately the detector would tell us about the mass of the substance so let's see in details the principles behind it so here uh, we have our sample and sample is injected in so let's say our sample is a volatile one so it's vaporized after our sample is in so it is getting inside into a specific location called the ionizer so here the sample would be bombarded with a, a beam of electrons so the sample would be converted into molecular ions in this chamber the sample would be converted into molecular ions now what would happen sample would get in, inside and it would be deflected by special, special kind of deflectors and it will take a path under this uh, magnetic field and it would take ultimately curved path and the radius of this curved path would be detected by the detector here this is the detector this is the detector and here we have a magnet a powerful magnet so here we have a magnetic field around it and here we have uh, electrical deflectors now we would try to understand the physics behind it so let's look at the physics so uh, here we have our ionization chamber as I depicted earlier so here is the sample insertion port so from this sample insertion port sample is inserted and now sample is here say for instance sample is here now it would be bombarded with beam of electrons and this uh, our sample would be then ionized and it would be called a molecular ion now this molecular ion would take a straight path by a region where we have a combined electrical field and a magnetic field say for instance we here we have a magnetic field which actually directs inside the plane of the paper here we have a magnetic field and 
here is the direction of our velocity of that particular molecular ion so now if we analyze the force of on this particular molecular ion the magnetic force on the particular ion what we would denote as fb force due to magnetic field we would find that the direction of the for force would be upwards so here we would apply our left hand thumb rule so you can also do it so take your index finger and your index finger should point around uh, in the direction of the magnetic field the next finger would point in the direction of the velocity of that particular ion and your thumb would point at the direction of force so our direction of force is actually above and so uh, this field this magnetic field uh, is into the plane of paper and the magnetic force is actually balanced by another force that is uh, due to uh, electrical field and these two force are balanced so this region is called a uh, velocity selector region this region is called a uh, velocity selector so actually the magnet uh, the uh, molecular ion is actually moving under a uh, space where we have a combined effect of a magnetic and a electric field now let's see the, our electrical field if e would be q into times e so q would be the charge of the particle and e is the strength of the electrical field and our magnetic field would be q times b times v now if these two are equal then we would have q e equal to q b v and the q cancel out and velocity becomes e by b now the molecular ions that has a particular velocity that means v equal to e by b can go straight and actually pass through a particular poor kind of thing and if the if b is greater than f e then what would happen the particle would get upside or if e is greater than f b then the particle would deflect it downwards and particle cannot pass through that is why this region is called velocity selector only the particles having the velocity v equal to e times b e over b would be selected for uh, further passing through a crossed magnetic field so now the particle once reach here with a velocity v equal to e over b now it would enter a cross magnetic field a magnetic field which is perpendicular to the plane of paper getting inside so the particle would get inside now what happened if we apply the same rule that means the particle would getting this side so this is the direction of velocity and the magnetic field is inside to the plane of paper so this is p so the force would be upward so when the particle would get in this direction it would be deflected upwards so let's see it is deflected upwards now it would take actually a circular path and after taking a circular path it is actually hitting the detector this is our uh, detector this is our detector once it hit the detector the detector would give us a particular data now uh, the radius of this path is very important and this radius of this path is known now we would do our physics and we know when a particle does circular motion it should have a centripetal force a force a centripetal force is very important for a circular motion so the centripetal force here would be f centripetal would be mv square by r where v square by r would be the acceleration and this centripetal force is provided by the magnetic force 
So the magnetic force on the charged particle with a velocity v would be Fb, denoting at is it as Fb, would be PQV. And these two would be equal. So PQV would be mv square by r. Now this v cancel out and the v would be and from here we would calculate a thing called mass by charge. So this mass by charge would be this uh, mass by charge would be PR uh, this mass by charge ratio would be PR by V actually so Oh, I'm sorry the mass by charge would be oh okay it's br by v so we have understanding about b we know the v and v would be e by b and we also know the radius so now the machine would calculate each time the mass by charge ratio and from this mass by charge ratio the machine would actually uh, tell us what is the molecular mass of the particular compound and it would plot it in terms of mass per charge versus our relative abundance. So ultimately by this equation the machine actually predicts the molecular mass. So ultimately the machine would give us a data like so in one axis the machine would keep the mass per charge ratio and in another axis it would put the relative abundance put the relative abundance and we would get uh, for a particular uh, substance we would get a peak somewhere around and from the peak we could uh, get information about its molecular mass so in this way uh, using a magnetic field and accelerating a charged particle through a magnetic field mass spectrometry actually is able to tell us about the molecular weight of a particle and also it can uh, tell us about the formula of a particle the structural information and sometimes uh, which isotope is present and uh, these informations hope you like the video please subscribe and thank you